And if somebody's parents here, which happens to happen in baseball all the time, donated a lot of money to the school, that doesn't guarantee you a place here. Because this is capitalism, bro, where the winners win. <laughs>
we take good people for granted. Because the moment we start seeing adversity, somebody that doesn't laugh at our jokes, somebody that doesn't, we walk in the door and they don't make us feel like we're in heaven, we don't like them right away. A winner creates opportunities. People are not going to talk to you about that. Omar and Ms. Isu can't talk about that because they're too busy winning. It's literally, hey, bro, orientation, here are your books, let's go, and attack, go win. When they did a story on me, it was at uh, the boys' club. We had to do it four times because one time there was no uh, chips, there was no battery, it was a disaster, no microphone. Blah, blah, blah. He, this leadership tells you to go figure it out. No other people are going to tell you to do that. These guys tell you to go figure it out. Because once you graduate here, the world's going to tell you to go what? Figure it out. And the reason why I can understand you guys super, super, super well is, like I was telling somebody before, I'm the only dude in here that's talked to Logan Paul, Omar Delgado, and when I got Josh Richards, when I get Vinny Hacker, Gary V, Francisco Lindor, George Lopez, all those guys in a show that started when COVID hit and the world stopped. Because I didn't know when I spoke here in January 2020 that Corona was coming. But I said the exact same thing. I'm going to tell you guys here. I said it over there. This is a relationship play. The word relationship in our terms means equals boys. Bro, Omar's my boy. That's the play. It's not for you guys to think, bro, Coach HP is the coolest guy in the world, man. That guy's so awesome. That shirt was amazing. No. It's a relationship play. Hopefully, what we're going to do here is, and you'll test it out, you'll DM me after and be like, Coach, bro, that was awesome. Whatever. Look, I have this problem. I have this. I have that. I don't get along with Omar. I don't like Mrs. I hate CCN and I got stuck. And I'm going to shoot you a DM right back that's going to look like something like this, which maybe they don't teach you guys this, right? Because this might not be for everybody because not everybody's a Navy SEAL. These guys are killers, man. They're attackers. What if you, after this speech, realize, like, oh, my God, I'm in the wrong place. I should be in the band. I should be in chess. I just want, this is killers in here. These are assassins. These are all awards. And none of these are, thank you for participating. If you realize that today, this is super easy. Omar, oh, my God, what a mistake I've made. I'm giving you this year, but I'm not going to be here long. What can I do to help? What do 95% of people do? Hate on Omar. Hate on my sister. This guy sucked. You go complain to your parents. Then your parents have to speak for you, which is the number one loser thing in the world. If your parents represent you as a dude, you're in trouble in high school. As long as everything's happening legal, right? And the legal thing is to try somebody. If you walk in here and you forget to bring something and this guy calls you out, that sucks. What you do as a man is say, bro, I messed up, man. It's not going to happen again. I'm going to clean this place. Can I clean this place to, to make up for that I messed up? Because one of the biggest things Principal Pugh wanted with you guys is accountability. I messed up. I got the wrong camera. I do this. I'm not blaming my homie. I'm not blaming my boy. No, because it's that guy's thing. Who cares? If five people go do a story and five people check up on each other, you think you guys are going to forget anything? Right? But like we talk about, everybody wants to be the face. Everybody wants to stand here and go, bro, I got Logan Paul. I got this. Blah, blah, blah. But what they don't talk about is how I had to sit there and wait and pretty much ambush the guy. Hey, bro, can I get you on my YouTube real quick? Yeah, bro. And then it started. Then the talent hit. But it's going to take a while for the freshmen and the young dudes in here to pop, man. So how do we pop when we're new? By giving. No one's going to hate on a giver. That matters. They might say he's trying too hard. They might say, but you give and you do and you do and you figure it out and you talk after. How do we do? Omar destroyed us. It's not a guy, a smooth guy, sometimes with words. He'll be, bro, that shit suck. He might tell you like that. That's your in. You're in assassin's world here, man. 
These are back to back to back to back. These are championship things. You got people now transferring over. When they build that monstrosity over there, you're going to have people come from all over the country to be where you guys are at. You guys got lucky. You landed here. Just like that awesome set of hair you guys have. You guys got lucky. You didn't do anything for this. Nobody knew you guys. You just were born with this, right? So you take it for granted. As a ball dude, I appreciate every single one of you guys here. The styles you got going on. Oh, look at this guy. Product, no product. Hair back, hair to the front. This guy's doing the way. I love it. But you don't know that because we're not trained to deal with adversity. How do you pop if you're not the guy? If you didn't come from the place? Well, perfect. You start at ground level. We can't worry about doing Emilio Stefan, David Beckham, if we can't cover an owl that started to that laid eggs in the corner. The stupidest thing in the world. Omar says, hey guys, look, four crickets are flying from the baseball field over there. Can you go get them? You want to be a loser? You want to be a hater? Complain about that. Winners, let's go. Bro, I don't know anything about crickets, but this we're going to go crazy on this. And we're going to do the crickets, and we're going to do the mental story, and we're going to hype it up, whatever, whatever, and that's it. Me, personally, as a winner, I don't talk to Omar. I don't talk to Mr. Isu unless it's production stuff. I don't want to tell him jokes. I don't want him to be a voice. Nothing. I want him to see me and see a killer. No funny business. I don't need to impress you. I don't want nothing. I want you to see my business. I want you to see what I do. So let me give you a little background on my story of how I'm the biggest failure in the history of Miami baseball. Biggest failure by far. After I failed miserably, because in high school, the one good thing I had is I had this height, I had the build, I had the charisma. I was never a hater. I was always a positive dude, but I had insecurities, man, because I didn't have anything. I didn't have a car, I didn't have cool clothes, I didn't even have freedom. So while you guys go to the cool parties, I got stuck because my dad was obsessed with making me a baseball player and he was beating the crap out of me and abusing me through that and I didn't have anything to pop, so I had zero swag. So I would create this like ego and this stuff that I'm the man that destroyed me. While being a cool, positive guy, because I wasn't a hater. This department, I've said this for three years now, fourth because of COVID this year. This has to be the most social department in this school. You guys have to know everybody because you cover what? Everybody. But what does everybody do? Oh, football won states? We're going to go jock the football team. Oh, this is, you want to be a winner? Everybody, bro. Everybody that comes back this year, even if you don't know, a handshake, yo, what's up, bro? I'm such and such CCNN, bro. What's up? Come through. That's about, what is this guy talking about? And every time you see him, same thing, same thing, same thing. Energy, man, energy. You walk in here, if you're having a bad day, the minute you hit that door, you got to tell yourself, bro, I got to wake up, I got to wake up, I got to create the vibe. You know what I'm saying? I got to create some vibe. I got to get these guys excited to see me. Not, hey, yeah, that they have to motivate me. No, no. You guys, because it's more, there's more students than two teachers here. You got to hype them up. If they see you guys going crazy, these guys are going to start like, oh, my God, we got to do more. These guys are animals. But if you're the reverse and it's like, oh, no, oh, quit. Tell them, look, man, this isn't for me. I'm sorry. I want to go to something else. The jungle has so many animals, bro. The sexiest one is the lion. Everybody thinks they're a lion. So they got to do lion activity. They're like, I don't like the lion too much. Bro, be the best gazelle, be a turtle, you know what I'm saying? Be a little butterfly, everybody's winning. But here, it's a whole different story. And how you make your mark is finding what you're good at. And if you don't know, start with the basics. Be the most organized guy. We always can use more organization, right or wrong. We can always use more organization. We can always use more what? Communication. That's it. We can always use more what? Positivity. We don't need negative people in here. We don't need haters to be like, oh, that guy's not doing his job. Tell, tell. Unless he asks you because he needs eyes on the place, you don't say nothing. You just work. Work. You don't need positive affirmation from them because you know yourself. We're all men here to understand when we're working and when we're not. Unless anybody doesn't know when they're really working or not. That's what this is about. That's what this whole talk is about. Four years of this. Last time I was here, I spoke. Who knew the world was going to change? Who knew? So I take zero for granted, man. 
I talk here like if I'm getting paid 20,000 a speech, 20 G's for an hour, when nobody will give me nothing. But you create because that's the difference, man. That's why this place wins. This is still the most gangster private school in the world because you got kids that are coming from blue collar homes that our parents are dying to bring their kids here. Winners, alumni that come back. And it's like, bro, what's up? Super Bowl ring, cool. You're back in town. Yeah, whatever, whatever. You got to know that guy. You got to say, what's up, bro? I was part of CCNN, bro. Let him block you. Let him. Whatever. That's them. The brotherhood. I said this for the people that were there. There should be a flag every year. 2020, 21, 20, the brotherhood wins a state title here every year. It's the strongest brotherhood in the world, man. I was the number one baseball instructor in Miami because I was aware of Columbus C and hat all over the place. As a 40-year-old, dude. Everybody hated on me in a baseball field, vlogging, 40 years old. All my friends, who does this guy think he is? He doesn't know anything, whatever, a camera, a kid. Except the little kids. The little kids were like, oh my God, vlogging, whatever, right? Failed miserably in high school, failed miserably in baseball, identity issues through the roof, got nowhere. Walked on to a school here, Miami-Dade, played baseball a little bit, same thing, disaster. Three years off. Played at FIU, walked on at FIU, nothing happened there. J-Lo discovers me on South Beach, puts me on a TV show with Vanessa Williams, and I start acting. I go, oh, my God, I want to become an actor. This is going to be awesome. So you know what I did that changed my whole life? I moved to Los Angeles, and because I had never worked in my life because I was a baseball player, I lived in a car for six months. I didn't know a single person. There was no iPhone. There was no YouTube. There was no... Uh, Netflix, it was nothing. I slept in the Hollywood Hills. And I thought that my charisma and my thing would get me somewhere, and it didn't, man. I became paranoid that they were gonna steal all my stuff because I had all my belongings literally in my car. But I adjusted my mind. And I said to myself, if I make it out of this with no help, zero help from my dad, Zero help from my mom, from anybody. If I could make it out of this, right? See how you're stretching? If I could make it out of this, right? I'm going to come one day, 20-something years later, to CCNN to talk to you guys, the lucky guys with a great set of hair. Another lucky guy. You guys are going to inherit a monstrosity. With it. You did zero for it. Zero. That guy over there did something. These people in Boston, you did zero. Nobody came to negotiate with you guys. Hey, bro, you think you need a new building? Would you like these square footage? Does this, these guys did. You're just going to land here. Part of the lucky Columbus Club. You get a lot of haters coming your way because that guy didn't have that. Imagine what that guy gave. If he won a Super Bowl ring, he probably won a Nobel Peace Prize with that place. But you guys are walking into this. How do you repay the effort that guy did? Effort, attitude, respect. Get the guy's information. Talk. Better house Kansas City. You're back. Any help you need. Not everything is money. Money's amazing. But if you don't got money to give, you can give time. Bro, you're working at an agency. Do you need anybody? Can I help you with editing? Can I help you with this look, bro? Can I record you? A million stuff. The day... I was here, I go, Omar, bro, can I get an editor? Yeah, sure. He gave me seven people. Everybody's busy. No, I'm traveling. No, I'm this, no, I'm that, whatever. They missed out. Now they'd be getting paid big time. But they didn't because they'd rather hang, they'd rather chill. And that's okay. This is Lion's World, man. I sucked as an actor, by the way. No good. Every acting thing I got was because I gave baseball lessons to kids. So their parents were on the show. So I got on King of Queens. I got a show called CSI Miami. I got a show called Headcase. All because I trained the, the producers and directors' kids. But I became a celebrity baseball trainer. And I ignored the signs of life. Because life, in a weird way, gives us signs of like, man, this is happening to me again. Why? Why? Why am I gravitating towards video games? Why am I gravitating towards news? Why am I gravitating towards lawn mowing? Why am I laughing? There's so many things you can win now. And my life was taking me to the path of using sports, my road to help you guys and to help you guys be happy. Not successful, happy, right? So after six years of failing in Los Angeles, 
I go, man, this is, this is not good. I'm not, I don't have the passion for acting. I got the passion for this. Passion to talk to people. I moved to a little town called Las Vegas. Ever hear of Las Vegas? And I lived at a little hotel called the Aria Hotel. And there was a Mandarin Oriental there. That's now the Waldorf Astoria. And I lived there and I had a club that I started off as a promoter called Hyde and the Bellagio. The Bellagio is the most visited hotel in the world, by the way. Okay? And I had a club there called Hyde and the Bellagio. I started as a promoter. And in a year and a half, worked my way up to director of VIP services, then director of nightlife and customer development. And I set a goal of working every day at 31, 31 years old. Look how much maturity it took me, 31 years old, to work every single day, put on a suit and tie. Positive momentum took me to a year and a half. I couldn't stop. It's the first time in my life I found what I wanted to do. I was in heaven. I built every contact in the world. Had the wealthiest players, celebrities, everything, finally, are my boys. A guy who didn't have any friends, lived in a car, man. But I had ammo to give people. You guys have ammo, man. You guys are about to become super sexy because of the team, not because of you, not because of the way you look, because of the team. Hey, bro, have you seen the new building? Omar, can we invite people to the new building once up? Omar, what do you think we should do? Omar, what are we doing? Omar, should we have the golf team in? Maybe we could do something. Omar, can we have the debate team? Omar, can we have this the Weber, Linsky, all these people? Can we invite them in? Can we show them what we're up to? Can we follow each other on Instagram, on TikTok? Are we helping each other on that side? Not Haiti. Not putting down. Let other people do that. Let the Belen people hate. Let the Gulliver people hate. Let the ranch people. But here is all love. When we get in here, this is war, man. We're fighting. What's today? Oh, today is food and HP. We have the food, we have the HP. We're going to clean and we're going to get out of here. We're not going to stay here and talk after. And, uh, uh, these people have family. They got to go. They got to win. That's what this is about. Four years in Las Vegas, became the most successful guy in Las Vegas in a four-year run that didn't own a nightclub. I had the highest theoretical player in Vegas. Bless you. Theoretical play for you guys that might get into that in the future. Vegas rates you on average hand times how long you play. Average hand means how high you make a bet. How long you play is how long you sit there playing. I had the highest theoretical player in Vegas, a dude that was playing a game called roulette. Have you guys ever heard of roulette before? It's the one that you, you, you either pick a number and you put chips or you pick a color. And the ball lands, a spinning wheel, boom, roulette. My guy was, paying, was averaging 330000 a spin. A spin, bro. Me, a public school kid that took the yellow bus from Miami, that was an extremely loser, that had identity issues, and nobody knew who I was. Biggest failure ever. Now I'm in that world. After four years of that, the man upstairs started talking to me. He says, you got to do more. The legend can't die there. Private planes, Europe, celebrities, you name it. Anything you guys want here, I did. I said, I'm going to come back to Miami to marry the love of my life, who I went to high school with, that I never spoke to, but I saw her one day. I go, that girl's gorgeous. I came back. I got her at Vegas 20-something years later to then come here to do this. The first time I came, I came July the 5th, 7 in the morning. I was here with Omar. Nobody knew who I was. I was here. We're going to record it. We're going to do this, whatever. I didn't know I was have Logan Paul one day. I don't know I was going to cover Jake Paul's fight. I don't know I was going to be the first influencer to sign with Rawlings. My own glove. Bats. Now I'm going to go cover the All-American game in San Diego. All paid for. I make a living doing what 90% of kids want to do today. An influencer. A social media influencer. That's how I make a living. I average in a post what my dad made in Pepsi, who's retired now, three times in a year, I do by posting. Opportunities are here. These guys are giving you the weapons to destroy. All you got to do is two things, effort and attitude and accountability. When they send you on something and you mess up because we're human and we're all going to mess up, own up to it. I messed up. Damn, I messed up. I am so sorry. Not, hey, my bad, bro. Hey, bro, my bad, man. Well, no, no. Bro, I messed up. I'm so sorry. Don't tell your parents. Don't complain. Don't create an excuse, right? Because 
COVID, the one good thing about COVID is that it hit everybody here equally. COVID didn't go, no, no, we're only going to be on top of Columbus. Or we're only going to hit Baldu, right? Everybody affected with COVID. And we have different stories how COVID ruined us. Your story ain't going to be mine. Careful with the Yanni. Your story ain't going to be mine. Because you guys didn't meet Gary V before. Anybody know who Gary V is here? So you look at your account, bro. Six something million, probably the top guy in what he does, entrepreneur, first investor in Twitter, Facebook gangster. You guys didn't meet Gary V February of 2020. Have a meeting set up with him. My first guest on my show was the CEO of Barstool Sports and had four of the biggest meetings line up that were gonna change my life like this, all canceled because of COVID. Am I what gonna die? Is this, the legend gonna stop there? Or am I gonna start the number one positivity podcast on the planet? Of course, everybody wants the hottest guest in the world. I try my best. Everybody rejects me, man. So I started my boys. Omar, let's get on. So Omar gets on the show. Omar, give me Josh from Josh Premium Meats. Josh gets on the floor. Omar, give me Kurt. Kurt from his boy. Kurt's the one. If you guys don't know, there's a guy by the name of Bad Bunny that when he started performing here in Miami, Kurt was the one guy that before he was called Benito that got him to play at Story. Huge people that they all went where? Columbus. That's the animals you guys have here. So why are you walking in with your head down? Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Yeah, cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, bro. Book bag down here. Now the mask, whatever. Who cares? We got to wear a mask? Wear a mask, bro. I'd write on my mask, what's up, bro? CCNN for life. I don't care. Talk. I'd make that into a positive. Not like everybody else does, a negative. That's for old people, man. Old people complain, right? That's, that's why old people do. They complain. You guys are young. Fire and opportunities. Fire and opportunities. You're going to have one teacher, two teachers, three teachers that you're going to hate. They're not going to like you. For whatever reason, that's how the law of this thing works. You want to be a winner? You win that teacher over. Winning somebody over it went huge. We had a lot of views on that last time I said it here. You win somebody over by investing in somebody, asking them about who. Who would you ask people about to get them to like you? You ask them about who? Themselves. themselves. Not you. Nobody wants to hear about you. It sucks. Nobody cares about you. People care about who? Themselves. So if you're the one dude that makes everything about somebody else, you will get everything you want in life at the right time. Omar's wife is pregnant. Hey, well, how's the wife? Cool, bro. All right, bro. Thank you. Bam. They say, Isuzu went on a trip. Oh, Georgia, cool, whatever. Boom. This guy with the ring. Oh, bro, so cool, man. How was Kansas City? Awesome, bro. Whatever. That's it. They don't want to hear your problems. Nobody does. Your parents do because it's almost a maternal thing, and by law, they got to hear it. Nobody else. Here's another thing. Chicks or whoever you hook up with, they don't want to hear your problems either. Nobody's into problem hearing. They want problem solvers. Everybody has problems. Whatever it is, we can all start going out one by one what problems we have. They're going to be different, but they're all problems. I look at opportunity. Three, two teachers, whoever it is, the hack, the cheat code this year for you guys is easy. Six teachers, whatever it is, you go talk to them. What's up, Mrs. Let's say Mr. Delgado. What's up, Mr. Delgado? He's not gonna be you. You're not gonna know who you guys are. Listen, I'm second year, first year CCNN. Man, I'm excited about that. I want to get an A in this class. You've got an in C your whole life in math. Go ahead. I want to get an A. I'm not good. But I'm going to hustle. Thank you so much, man. Where are you from? Did you go to school here? What year are you? Oh, wow. Do you like the Dolphins? Do you like the Hurricanes? you like Florida State? This guy will talk about Florida State all day long. If you let him. The Seminoles, this, that. Right? That's how you win people over. Not going, bro, hey, you win, bro. Florida State sucks. That's not winning somebody over. That's fighting. Out of 10 people, one and a half might do this but they're winning the ones that do, trust me. When I spoke here the first time, there was two freshmen that were popping off that the world was on their fingers. News, this, that, blah, blah, blah. I talked to them. They didn't make it, they didn't make it because they didn't stay humble, man. The ego got them. 
and they're not going to come back like this dude, I promise you, so they're not going to have the love here. They might make it somewhere else, but the only way they're going to come back is on their knees apologizing. And they're going to let them back. I guarantee you, I need to say, bro, share your story of how you went wrong. Because you're going to pop. And you're going to pop when you get that monstrosity over there. What do you do? Are you going to stay cool and come back four years later for free Walmart? I got you, bro. Let's go, whatever. Or you're going to be like, nah, nah, man. It's 20 G's the hour, bro. You don't got that? I don't want to talk to you. Because you never know who's who. You never know who's who. And now we're all starting to look the same. Because before, you used to see people that were successful with suit and tie. No more. Now we got tattoos. Now we're bald. Now we're earrings. We got a million things. Sandals. Where we all look different. The crypto world's coming in, new stuff that people with suit and ties almost like look old school now. I want you guys to be the most social team in town. That's doing pretty good, man. Everybody good? Yeah. That's the vibe? Yeah. Awesome. Do like 10 more minutes. We got to have questions. So be thinking about questions. We got to do questions. We got that. We got results, accountability, vulnerable. Vulnerable. This is a hard one for us guys. The reason why I sucked as an actor is because I couldn't be vulnerable. So what does that mean? I didn't even know what the word means. I used to get a script and the thing, sit down, bro, sit down, find a chair if you want. So let me tell you guys about acting 101. When you act, you get a script. And what makes the script cool and a movie cool is that there's peaks and valleys in the thing. There's a good part that the hero's crushing it, then the hero sucks, and oh, he's not going to do it, but then he wins at the end, right? Me, I just wanted to win. So if I was a dude playing a dude that just got chicks and made a lot of money, it was awesome, that was me 24-7 in the movie. But that's what? Boring. That's boring. We want to see people go through that. So I had zero vulnerability, so I sucked as an actor. When I had to be sad because my chick left me, I was like, no way, man, no girl leaves me. What are you, crazy? I want you guys to understand what vulnerability is. So in your guys' world, what's vulnerability? The dude, I, you know what? Mr. Delgado, Mr. Isu, I'm lazy. I'm a lazy guy. It's okay. I got to change that. I don't want to be lazy. Everything coach said there, I am. I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm not outgoing. I don't want to work. I want to chill at home. I want to be with my parents. I want to live off them. I want to be on vacation. I want to work. Oh, man, help me. That's vulnerability. You're insecure about something, that's vulnerability. You don't like the way you speak. You don't like, you continue to yawn, right? That's a vulnerability. Oh my, I continue to yawn, bro. When a guy's speaking, give me fire. Why? Because if I'm a winner and I see this dude, and maybe you're, like, oh, you're the yawning guy. I don't want the yawning guy. I don't want the guy in my, if there's a fire, I don't think this guy's going to yawn and stuff to death, right? That's what I'm here for. So when some dude's here and you're going to yawn, you either do this, you're going to go, that's the important part, because there's too many haters out there, and the world is super, 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 super competitive. Fire, passion is what everybody wants. Nobody wants to hire chill dudes. Nobody looks at a job application. Oh, I got four guys here. Let's hire this guy because he looks chill. <laughs> it sounds crazy. I want the chill dude. He's not going to bother me. He's going to be mediocre. He's going to be average. No. Attacking. I started to vlog in the streets of Miami, talking about baseball with little kids that were three, four, five years old. And then I came here to Columbus and Coach Weber, who coached me one year in Braddock, took me and said, of course, of course, coach. And I said, but listen, I'm gonna do it for free. And, and I'm gonna do what nobody wants to do. I got the freshman Saturdays at 2.30 in the afternoon. Nobody wanted that game. I got that game. That's how I provided what? value because when varsity played you know how many coaches were there 10 because everyone wants to be part of columbus varsity just like everybody wants to be a part of that monstrosity that's coming there but there's a key word that separates us so there's effort attitude and then how can i bring value to the situation what can i bring value how can i help the situation what do i got can i write a check that's value it's hard but that's value or can I pick up? Can I clean? Can I be positive? Can I help? Or can I be here early? That's adding value. Can I do more edits after I'm done? Don't try to take over the world one story at a time. 
one step at a time. You're not going to impress them. It's to show them that you care and you take ownership of what you do, man. You take pride in what you have. That's where the hard work comes in. Everybody told me they would help me edit. You know how many, and this is before I knew Omar, you know how many people helped me edit? Zero. So I had to take my happy, positive self at 39 years old to the Apple store and sit there and learn how to do iMovie twice a week for two months so I could edit my own videos. So that now, when I'm successful, I have dudes DM me all the time in your world, content guys, like, oh, coach, I want to videotape you, whatever. I go, great, bro. This is, where, this is what, uh, what I can afford for you. Oh, no, 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 I don't do that, man, because it, I don't travel, and I have a travel call, so I go, cool, bro. That's why you're out of a job. Because there is no more, oh, I should make this. You don't, shouldn't make anything. Because you guys don't matter. You know what matters? CCNN and what these guys done. After four years, then we start to matter. Because we earned it. Here's a good story. We earned it. Not like your hair. You got lucky with the hair. Right? Everybody here got lucky. Nobody here is worried about hair loss, are you? Nah. You got lucky. Now, some of you are six feet. Some of you are not. Whatever. That's a different story. But the hair, everybody here is winning. Four years before you ask for anything. They'll give you your life, man. This guy, that guy over there will ask for anything for Omar. They're going to give it to him. Because he's earned it, man. That's why he came back. He could be anywhere in the world. Came back here. See what I'm saying? Questions, come on. Let's get some questions in. Let's do at least five questions for this group. I have a question. Yes, sir. This, this school is, I want them to hear this, though. So I want you to, last year was a weird year for us. Right. right? And I have certain people in leadership that were kind of put there because of default. Right. You know, I didn't have anything else. Right. And I had other, I had a couple of kids that were like, oh, well, I guess he has to be it because he's the next one, you know? And I've said it multiple times, and I'll say it again, okay? This guy came in in January, and I worked everyone. If I could go back in time, I would make him my president as well. Right. But I also am loyal. So what's right is right. My president of the club is not here right now. Right. He is. Who's the first one here when you walked in? Right, right. Okay? Explain to them... Certain times, situations occur where you don't get the, where you, you get the, the, uh, uh, something given to you. I got it. I got not it. Not because you work for it, because you got it. the right time. And other times, you don't get what you want. I got it. Even I got it. you all work for something. I got you. Here we go. Here we go. Hardest thing that I deal with. Want to hear what the hardest thing that I deal with is this. Expectations. There's a word called expectations, right? So I'm at a place right now. When I started... Friends of mine hated on me and laughed at me. They're like, bro, really? You're going to do videos on the internet and YouTube? Right? Careful with the yawning. Then, right? Then strangers started, because they got started getting more followers. And strangers started hating. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This guy's not really that positive all the time. Right? Then guys started doing accounts, mimicking me and making fun of me. Me, my hard work, I'm there till four in the morning. It's like a dude comes with a filter, a grown man who's a teacher with kids hating on me, criticizing everything I'm doing. And then to make it even bonus, he's tagging people that I'm putting in my stories, right? I keep going. And then the worst part about everything and the hardest thing that I deal with is, you don't know what it's like to have somebody extremely famous extremely successful, tell you you're the greatest of all time, I'm going to do this with you, this with you, this with you, this with you, and they do nothing. They could change your family's life like this, they could change your life like this, and they get amnesia. That means they forgot. And you can't go, hey, bro, you, you told me you were gonna, I was gonna, we were going to do a show, you wanted to sponsor my podcast, whatever. Where are you at, bro? You were going to introduce me to this person, I'm this person. We're talking about powerful, famous people that I've sat with, and I looked at my tie, and they lied to me in my face. Winners, attack on the situation. Winners, attack on the situation. Losers look around and go, oh, man, they gave it to this guy. I should do it. Blah, blah, blah. Worst thing that could happen to the guy that transferred from Gulliver is that that thing goes to his head. That's the worst thing that could happen. Oh, bro, I'm set. Best thing that could happen to the guy is that that guy heard reverse. I got to do more. I got to keep doing. I got to keep doing. So you guys have to have the pulse 
on what's happening. And if you're confused, because we're confused, grab Omar one on one. Omar, let me ask you a question. Bro, I think I'm, you told me I'm crushing. You think I should be the president. Why am I not even mentioned? He's going to tell you as a man. But we don't ask questions. We just watch the show and we believe everything. You don't have haters there. If they were haters, this would, I wouldn't be here and this would be a completely different conversation. But you got guys that want you to win. How do you know this, that I'm not lying? Look, you got an alumni right there. A Super Bowl champion is right there, right there. And he came to this school. So I'm not creating a story. And I didn't, tell, I didn't pay this dude to come. He came on his own will. He's a free. Nobody kidnapped him. You got to come to Columbus today, right? You got winners. So if something's happening here that you don't like, can I talk to you alone? Don't complain to your homie. Don't start ruining everybody else because this is a team. And if you have to be a loser, you got hater in you, which is okay. Acknowledge it, bro. I'm a hater. Damn. Omar, I got to talk to you. Omar, in the words of Coach HP, I'm a hater, bro. Maybe my dad's a hater. Maybe my mom's a hater. I have haters around me. How can I fix this? Because you can't ruin each other because this is a team. If it wasn't a team, there'd be one dude in here. But you're a team. You got to work together. When you do a story, there's four, there's three, there's five. You got to work as a team. And you know what else is a team? The world. You guys got to work together. Even if you don't like the dude. Even if the dude's lazy, then you got to motivate the guy. Got it? Not hate on the guy, motivate him. And then after the story, talk to Omar one-on-one. Oi, Omar, I want to be honest with you, bro. The Gulliver guy, it went to his head. I don't want to do nothing. I did this, this, and that. This is between us. You tell me. And they're going to handle it, I guarantee you. They don't let anybody slide. If they're worried that you didn't bring anything to the potluck or whatever this was, you think they're going to let you jack up a story? Hell no. But everybody wants to do who? David Beckham and Emilio Stefan. Great. Do the nobodies. Do the things. Do the town. Miami's become the most popping city in the world by default. We got super lucky. We got a mayor that went super aggressive. While everybody else was shutting down, he's like, oh, bro, we're going to go hard. We're going to go hard. We're going to go hard on crypto. We're going to go hard on everything sexy. So Miami's booming. We have a governor that has our back. We're not close. Miami's popping. You guys are in the right place to report what? The news. Everybody's here. So you can't sleep and be here and win. So how you deal with that is, is honesty with yourself. And if it gets to the point that it bothers you, don't tell your homie, don't tell your dad, don't complain. Omar, Aziz, I got to talk. Why am I not getting Beckham? Why am I not getting Emilio Stefan? Why wasn't I on the red carpet? Like, why? Why was that dude on the red carpet? And they're going to tell you. He was on the red carpet because he showed up here with a president. Where's the president? Oh, the president, where? I was at the DMV or whatever I was stuck. Oh, yeah, I, I take the bus. Don't. Pursue greatness if you're scared of being uncomfortable. We got to be uncomfortable, man. It sucks. Being uncomfortable sucks. Coronavirus sucks. Losing a parent sucks. Losing a kid sucks. Last year, in a, in a whim of a month, I lost my second child. Okay? And I had to go give up my dog, my boy, my pit bull that I rescued from Las Vegas. I literally had to go give him up because I'm Coach HP and I can't spend time with the poor dog. Half people would have crumbled and be like, oh, my God. Why? Because one day you guys are going to have families. One day people are going to depend on you. And if you're hard now at 18, 17, 15, bro, when you're 40s, you're going to be assassins. You're going to be winners. You're going to have people come back and visiting you with all the respect in the world. Or you fall in the trap. And a lot of us are falling in now. Depression, anxiety, stuff like that. That's why this is important. That's why this talk's important. Because whoever else he had here, with all respect, they could care less about you guys. Go DM whoever they had here with the suit. I saw them. For whatever news channel, DM them. They're going to respond to you. That's not their job. Their job's to, hey, I want to make Omar happy, whatever, cool. I put it on the resume. This is my job. The man upstairs gives me success so I can sit here on a Thursday and tell you guys exactly how it is. Exactly how to live off of your talents, man. Your passion. My highest four videos on YouTube is how to break in a baseball glove. Literally the camera. What's up everybody, it's your coach. How to break in a baseball glove. Right? Next question. Go for it. Regarding the 
regarding time management and you have a lot of your plans and like your priorities, what's your advice with that? You got to know what you're good at and you got to know what you're not good at. So an example. And you got to know what requirements you are. The Coach HP show is doing amazing, my podcast. I half-ass that show, not on the passion part, because you give me the camera and I'm this guy and I'm fire, whatever. I die when it comes to the editing, when it comes to before, and it comes to, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of the Coach HP show. Today in the show, we got Mr. Omar Delgado. I should do that every show. I don't. Some shows are like, that's going up. That's going up, right? That's going there. And I know that because I'm human. And I don't have a team. Do they have a team? Or they Spotify gives me the deal and I got the bag and they give me people. They're going to handle it. But for now, I got to do it. So I do time management as best as possible with what are the priorities. So what you got to figure out is what's your priority that makes you guys still function and be happy. I don't need vacations. I don't. I'll die talking to you guys here. Some people do. I don't need to chill. I don't need to go out. I'm super passionate about what I do. Some people do. You got to know yourself. So you got to start understanding what makes us good at what we do and why we suck sometimes. Let's use the yawning guy an example who see how now you're on point. Maybe you're like, bro, I'm a yawning dude. Bam. I got to fix that. You know what? You might not do it again. You know what I'm saying? Right? So hold on a second. So that's the key. Figure out what you're good at. If you're a good editor, if you're a good producer, whatever, okay, but I suck at organization stuff. Okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that because you got to cover everything. So that falls under knowing yourself. Go for it. Um, let's say, like, in, like, life in general, things aren't going so well and you've caught, like, a couple of bad breaks, mm -hmm. quote-unquote. How important is, is having, like, a certain level of self-respect to, like, keep, keep going? Okay. That's how the man upstairs... Karma, the universe, whatever you believe in, rewards you. Is if he sees you get hated on by friends, by family, shut down by everybody, you don't make anything, whatever, but you keep going and you're positive, eventually two things are going to happen. You're either going to die trying or you're going to make it. Why do you think, and I say something, why do you think the most successful music out there is hip-hop? Why? Because those dudes' dads were millionaires? Because they were crushing it? No, because they have nothing. So when you either do something or die trying, chances are you're going to make it. Because there's never been one dude that has died actually trying. Because you're going to make it. Eventually, the numbers will hit. Eventually. The problem is, and they hate on you guys for that, is because they say you guys want everything fast. And it's not your fault. Because nobody talks to you this way over and over and over again with the time because everything happens fast around you. When we wanted to see a movie, we had to go to Blockbuster. Oh, is it the video? Oh, here's the video. Oh, mom, give me the card. Please get the card. We got a reward. Somebody rent. Bro, I wanted to see the, the, the one with the rock that just came out. Oh, man, somebody rented it. Oh, next week, whatever. No, we go on the phone. Beep, 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 and it's there. But that doesn't happen with our dreams. Doesn't happen with what we want. Doesn't happen with the woman of our dreams. Doesn't happen any of that stuff. But it happens with a lot of stuff. We gotta learn to separate what technology can give us and actual achievements and celebrate the small stuff. That's why the process is everything. I don't care less about results. I'm worried about the process. Me here today is a process move. Process, not a result. Result will be when I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 DMs after this. Coach HP, bro, it was awesome you having here. Coach HP, you sucked, whatever it is. I get 20 of those. That's the result I want. But I'm worried about process because I can't control that. Make sense? So how you deal with those moments is mindset. Did I try my best? Am I trying to get the lead story? Am I trying to get an A in history and math? Whatever, I didn't get it. I'm going to keep trying. If I keep trying, I like it. If I don't keep trying, I don't like it. When I'm done with school, I'm not going to do it anymore. Biggest competition I've ever spoken at is the Ultimate Gamer. 
Ultimate Gamer is a video conference, a video game conference that you play Smash Bros, Fortnite. If you gotta go, go. You gotta go? Go for it. Go for it, dude. Dale. Stay positive out there, bro. Fortnite, Smash Bros, Halo, right? I deal with, or I used to work with kids that didn't want to go to the baseball field. It's too hot. Their parents are pushing them, whatever. Gamer kids, oh my God. They're walking in with book bags. They're like this. They don't talk to anybody. When you're playing video games at that level, I don't know if there's any gamers in here, but if you play at that level, you don't use a controller. It's mouse and keypad. Da, 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 da. That's how you do it, right? $75,000 prize winner, age 12 and up, to sit there, indoor, speakers, music, big screens, the sexiest thing, awesome, air conditioning at Wynwood, at Mana Wynwood, for the Fortnite, for that tournament. That's why everybody wants to be a gamer, because it's sexy. You can sit there, dress exactly like you are now, in your chair, in your house, and crush it. It's not anymore. At our age, we look like clowns. Like, what is the guy doing? The biggest idiot of the world. That's why mindset wins with you guys now. Okay? Go for it. For what though? Motivated for what? To be good at this. I'm sorry? To be, good at this. to be good at this, right? So maybe, maybe if you say, okay. I, biggest mistake I made was when I was at the nightclub, the president of MGM Resorts, guy I went to Harvard, a guy named Jim Muren, who's a beast, awesome, pulls me out of the nightclub, tells me, Listen, in Steve Wynn's old office at the Bellagio tells me that I have capabilities of being a president of a hotel one day, of a casino. Think about that, bro. I'll be president of a casino. I was like, wow. And immediately, immediately in my head, I go, I'm going to be president of a hotel in Cuba. That's what I thought. I'll be a free Cuba. I'm going to go back to Cuba. And I'll be president. I'll be awesome. I'm going to come with this Vegas experience, whatever. I sat there when I made the transition. I go, this is going to be my next move. And when I sat there, and I found myself in a corporate world where I had to, like, all of a sudden, I'm in the nightclub world where I literally got paid. Hey, guys, want to party? Here's a table. I get 10% of you this. I get tipped. I get great. There's no rules other than they spend the alcohol and I get paid. That's it. To now, I got to send emails. I got to report. Who did I talk to? It was the worst decision of my life. My motivation went like this. You know what I did? I left. I didn't hate on the job. Whatever. I go, bro, this is not for me. But I know that at 30... It was 35, 36 when I did that, right? You think somebody has to motivate me to speak? For free, bro. For free. Four years in a row. For free. By the way, anybody know what? Here's a, here's a story. I'm uh, glad I remember this. Anybody here heard of Black Rifle Coffee? You heard of Black Rifle Coffee? Black Rifle Coffee is probably the most popping coffee right now. Started by a guy, ex-Navy SEALs who's a huge fan of coffee. And that was his thing. Guy used to play baseball. Coffee guy, he convinced the military when he was in Afghanistan to send a $50,000 coffee maker, espresso thing, because that was his thing and they have a budget, so they did all that thing, right? Black Rifle Coffee, popping. He's been on Joe Rogan's podcast, everything in the world. He's been on my podcast. This week, I was going to go because he used to be a baseball guy. I have a special Manny Machado model, Rawlings glove, that I'm going to give him in San Antonio, where his base is. And we we're going to do video, and I was going to be on his podcast, whatever. She's like, bro, I'm playing with the dates. First week of August. He wasn't too sure. Where am I? I'm not in San Antonio. It has a million-plus subscribers on YouTube. It's one of the best podcasts in the country. But I'm not there. I'm here with people that have my back. You're gonna have to kill me, right? So you gotta figure out, bro, if I'm passionate for this, I'm not passionate for that, okay, can I motivate myself? If I can't, and what year are you in? I'm a junior. Junior, right? So you got two years. If you can't, means you're normal. Perfect. Omar, I wanna talk. Bro, this guy has the fire. I don't, bro. I'm gonna go sing. Super cool. He'll respect that more. You don't have to do anything. Just be a man and own up to it when you don't feel it. Don't trick them. Just like it's going to work too 
with girls or whatever you're into. Be honest. Try it. It'll be awesome. Don't lie. Don't flake him. Don't fake her. Just be honest. Listen, okay, my motivation is an example. Back them. When you put me to do La Carreta, I hate that. You're not going to be good at this because you have to do what? Be CCNN. You have to be at CCNN when nobody knows who you are for free in order to get somewhere. Unless your dad is David Beckham, Pop Daddy, 50 Cent. Those kids are different. But unless somebody here is that famous. My dad wasn't. So I had to do what? Come here at 40. Got that? That's how you deal with that. Because there's no formula to pump yourself up. You either got it or you don't. Especially here. How do you break bad habits? By understanding that what you're doing over and over and over again, okay, sucks. And the, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing, bad habit over. So you got to write down, even if you got to write down, what's my bad habit? Bro, I don't brush my teeth. Stupid stuff like that. I don't brush my teeth. I don't finish jobs. I don't call people back. I don't text people back. I don't, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? And you got to write that down. And then you got to be man enough to want to do what? Fix it. What's the worst habit you have? Do you want to share anything? Like what? Give me, give me one small thing you don't do. Sometimes I won't make my bed. Sometimes. Perfect. So now you realize, okay, you know what? I'm going to become a winner at everything. So if I can show myself, because we're always talking to who? Ourselves. Everybody here talks to themselves. Every, people here are not sitting, bro, how long is this guy going to go longer? And some people are like, bro, this is amazing. Omar right now is like, okay, HP, give it a little more. I got to pick, look, I got to pick up my kid at 1.30. It's 1.15, right? I got the babysitter. She's going to have to wait till we're done here. I don't care. So what I want you to do is, let's start with making the bed. If you make the bed or die every single day, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to make your bed. And you're going to go, okay, man, that was easy. What's another thing? What's another thing? What's another thing? The more bad habits we eliminate, the more we win so we can provide what? Value. And if you want to break any habit, just break the negativity and the hating. That's going to kill you. If there's a habit you guys can bring, it's positivity. Aziz. So, coach, I mean, I didn't do this, but I really don't put away at home, but I did. So, I really, I feel like I'm going to make, like, a poster when he leaves here today. Look at the things that I've written down. Fire, opportunity, ownership, vulnerability, conquer the world one story at a time. Don't be a hater. Ask questions. Be uncomfortable. These are all key things for your success here that he has said in the past hour. If you were his I'm going to make that a poster. Okay, I'm going to make a poster. I'm going to put it in my classroom, and I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to put it in the new building. Okay? Beautiful. Because I love it. How can we get some of these guys, these guys in the back, they, they, most of them have been here before, but a lot of these guys in the middle, they're young, they're incoming freshmen, right? And one of the things that we most get, we were talking about earlier in a small group here, is I want to be the anxious. I want to be the guy in the front. How do we better explain to them that sometimes the best way to get to the top is by... No, every time, every time, every time. The way to get in is by doing what nobody wants to do. Coach Weber, I'll do the freshman at 2 o'clock. What happened? I popped. I was a beast there. I was the only guy there. Hey, guys, let's go. Let's go. The games don't matter. They matter to me. In my head, that's going to a million people in the world. A million people. Seven people might see it. But in my head, a million people. So I'm giving you that fire. So as there's two ways we're going to look at this. There's what the leadership can do and what you guys can do. A, unfortunately, these guys are never going to be at your level. So it's the patience you guys have to reiterate every single, maybe Monday. All right, guys, so Gulliver again. What's, what's Gulliver's name? Lucas. Lucas. Lucas comes, right? Lucas is looking down. So that Lucas comes, and Lucas now wants to be the face of the program because Omar said he's the, he should be the president. So Luke, hey, team, listen. Okay, let's go step by step. We're a team, and we got to earn it. So for now, we got to carry the tripod. We got to go slow. Trust me, I am seeing, as long as you, I'm seeing the progress and you earn it. And we're going to give you stories that you like. Communication. And it's hard because it's, how many times that's where you guys have to become extra patient and extra rah-rah cheerleader and be like, listen, guys, again, please. I know everybody wants to be in Star Island with Emilio Stefan. But you know Emilio Stefan, when he was in Spain, that dude used to play the accordion. 
at your age younger for money because his dad was losing everything gambling and that's how he supported himself because his mom and his brother got stuck in Cuba, communist Cuba and that dude's in Spain, I ain't playing the accordion for tip for money. So what have you done to earn it? Blue collar style. And if somebody's parents here, which happened to happen in baseball all the time, donated a lot of money to the school, that doesn't guarantee you a place here. Because this is capitalism, bro, where the winners win. And you did a donation, awesome. But that ain't going to let you know here because this guy respects blood, sweat, tears, action. Not donations. He already got it. Make sense? This time we almost cut the guy at this building's name after? Oh yeah, bro. You mess around with this place. You get eaten alive. So how you do that is, man, they talked about this today in your note and your phone. Type in, I will not ask for a story I do not deserve. I do not deserve. And if I think I deserve, do five more stories and then ask. Listen, how about that math? How can you lose? Bro, I deserve when the Dolphins go to the Super Bowl. Have I done my five stories about the iguana? Have I done my five stories about the, the priest? Make sense? That's how you do it. And then unfortunately, you guys come back to them and you have to be patient. I say, all right, guys, it's Monday. Welcome back. All right. Don't ask for something unless you earned it, please. Everybody here wants to be such and such. We'll get there. Cool? Cool. Next question. When you say that like the CEOs and representatives like why do you about the stuff, how do you combat that and still get the story and like straight Say it again, say it again. Lower the mask. Go. So you said that like the big CEOs and stuff will lie to you about Jake, like okay, they're gonna do something they don't. Yes. How do you combat that and still get like what you want or like they Of course. You keep going. Here's a philosophy, ready? And you guys do it tremendously with girls or whatever you're into. You're not gonna go, hey girl, what's up? Hey, cool, you're not gonna give me my number? Cool. Bro, that's it, I'm done, no more girls in my life, I'm leaving. No, you do what? You try again with a different one. And you keep trying, but you know what happens? We get better because we're doing what? We are getting our reps in. That's why I don't recommend to get your reps in with a 10. Or the hardest thing in the world, because the chances of scoring there are very hard, right? My caliber of chicks, really changed when I had a nightclub behind me, I had money behind me, I had every single thing in the world to do damage, bro. So I got everybody that I kind of wanted because I had that facade behind me. Very different than if I was YouTube and nobody knows me on the streets of Miami, like, hey, bro, it's different things. We live in planet Earth. So how I got rejected by people, most famous guy, Coach K. I hit up Coach K every year. Hey, Coach K, whatever, because I used to play for the coach of baseball at Duke. That's my boy. I had him on my show. I tried to hit Coach K. Shuts me down. I keep going. That's when you know you're going to win, bro. When you keep going. Nobody makes it anywhere in one shot. Very rare. So are lottery winners. This ain't the lottery. You got to keep going. Everybody we listen to. The Baby, Jay-Z, you name it. Everybody failed. And you failed, and you fail, and you keep failing because Michael Jordan got cut, Tom Brady got cut, Bill Belichick sucked in Cleveland. See how all this works? Everybody that's winning sucked at one point. You gotta suck. And if you keep going, we have passion. We don't quit. You keep going, no more bad habits because it mattered to me. And the CEO said no, find another CEO. Relationships. Last three lessons I gave, I've had them all on my podcast. When I was in Beverly Hills, look at these three individuals. One of them, a guy named Justin Shigarian, I gave a lesson to him when I was 12 years old. Now he's 24, CEO, creator of a drink called Psalm Sleep. Psalm Sleep is the official sleep drink. It's like Red Bull, but to go to sleep. MLB, NBA. I worked with that kid a little bit younger than you guys. Second one, Stevie Dunn. Stevie Dunn's dad owns a product company called Munchkin. Competitor right there with Gerber, right? Billionaire. I worked with this kid. Second one, Beverly Hills. Third one, my boy, who is dad, Ted. 
Tony T is the CEO of Netflix. How about that one, bro? All three on my show. Because I was cool with them. Not because I big time them and treated them like shit. That make sense? One more. I'm gonna have to get a new nanny. One more. How do you deal with juggling life's like life's big like uh, multiple responsibilities? Like I often find myself, you know, like neglecting one responsibility, pick up another, and then. Well, give me an example of one responsibility you've neglected to another that you could think of. Well, I mean, I'm full, I'm in uh, CCN and film club. I find myself, you know, I find myself juggling both things constantly. I feel like, you know, almost. What club are you in? Would you say? Uh, CCN and uh, Columbus Films. Columbus Films. Okay. So this is what you do. Sometimes, some people in here are gonna juggle two chicks, right? Sometimes, remember those days, Omar, right? I used to. Sometimes, long time ago, three girls. Sometimes you just juggle four, and you're gonna realize, wow, juggling four is a, is a job at itself. And I hope you guys, you can see what that is, right? Because you can't take care of everything and it becomes a disaster, right? Maybe you gotta make a choice, bro. Maybe you gotta come and say, Omar, I love you guys. I hope you guys go to the moon. I'm a films guy. You ain't gonna hate on that, bro. As long as you put in your time here and you don't slack here. Make sense? That's the easiest one of them all. If you're doing football, right, and you're doing this, and you're more passionate about it, and this one's struggling, this is the last year at CCNN, and it's okay. But you stay boys with these people. Every time you say, Delgado, did we win this year? What? Oh, yeah, awesome, bro. Thank you, bro. I know I suck, bro, but I love you. Right? Because this is a guy that you want to have in your corner, and she's a person you have in the corner for the rest of your life. Because you have people that care. I don't know about any other department. You got people that care. So what I want you to do is think to yourself. Don't want to do both. You don't have to do anything, bro. Only thing you have to do in life is be happy. That's it. That's the only thing you got to try to do. Everything else has its consequences. But being happy, that's the key here. One last one, because that was a good one. Anybody else? Don't let him go two. If this guy goes two... That's, all right, let's do it. Go for it. Um, sometimes, like, uh, like, let's say you're really motivated to do something, but sometimes you just don't have, like, that focus. How do you, how do you get yourself to get, like, locked in on a particular goal? Then it's not, the, the goal's not too much, man. Like, that it doesn't really value it. Like, I, it would be like me right now, if you guys motivate. Omar could not motivate me to write up my experience here today. In writing, I would die. I go, oh my, I can't, bro. I go, like, oh, my God, I like, faint. I don't want to write anything. I'll say it in a video. I'll pop it up. Now, what's up, everybody? It's your coach. Listen, I crushed it here. See, da, 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 da. Right? So unless it's something you have to do, because there's part of this job that might be hard that sucked, man. Right? Whether it's the editing, whatever. Try to get that out of the way first. Or ask for help. Oh, bro, how can I do this better? Not, oh, yeah, I'm the, like everybody, like right back to what Ms. Isu said. Everybody wants to be the face. And then I cut. Take it easy, guys. I'm out of here, right? Nah, bro. Right? In the big leagues, you don't even pick up your bat. Somebody picks up your bat. Somebody's a field there. In high school, not here because it's a different field. You got to drag the field. You got to bring out the equipment, right? The higher you go, that's how you got to look at this. Okay? So let's do a recap real quick. Number one, don't be a hater. Number two, don't be a hater. Effort, attitude, best friends, your best friends. Not to share your problems, but to be honest. My motivation is not there. My motivation here, or maybe it's over there. You gotta be honest. He's gonna respect the truth. Nobody does that. Everybody stays undercover. They kind of like weed themselves out in mediocrity, and then you don't get to benefit the relationship that this guy has, man. This guy has a lot of. Not only a lot of knowledge that's going to help you, but he has a lot of contacts, bro. And you don't want to jeopardize that because you were a dick in here and you didn't do your work. Okay? That's the third thing. Fourth thing is you got to know your principal. Your principal is a beast. If you haven't met him yet, go say, what's up? Hey, bro, I'm in CCNN. Man, Coach HP spoke and you. I want to say, what's up? I want to know you. Say hi to people. Fifth thing, you got to be social in here. You will crush it. If you do that, these four years, will be worth it. Boys with everybody, I don't care who it is, golf, chess, whoever it is, because you never know where your break's coming from. Last thing, at Coach HP on Instagram, you DM me if you felt the fire.
If you didn't, DM me too. I'm not going to hate on you. On the contrary. I show you love. Got it? Anything you guys need from now on. If I see any of you again and you don't say hi to me, I'm going to fight you. <laughs> Make sense? When I speak here, because I'm going to do it, and I see you in the halls, you grab me because you all look the same to me. You might be wearing the tie, whatever. Hey, HP, bro, CCNN, 14 years ago, or whatever it is. You hit me up. You say, what's up? If you go somewhere, you say, what's up? Got it? Is that cool? All right. Guys, I just want to let you know that, that he's not talking to you and then not following you. All right? Because, what was it, four years ago already? Yep. I didn't know him. We didn't know each other, right? He just got my number from Weber. He was like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. I was wondering, you know, can you mind if I talk to your kids? Can you maybe help me with some equipment? I didn't know, but I, you know, I, I felt like he was coming from a good place. He came. CCNN was the first speech you ever did, right? First speech that I ever did in Miami, and it was actually Gilbert Melon, who's my boy who has a limousine company, Gilbert. reaches out to me. Well, you should talk to Omar. He puts a guy to do, help me do editing that didn't do the job. Right. But I go, bro, and I didn't know about camera. I didn't know about anything. So I would lean on him. Bro, what's a USB cord? What is this? Omar, what is that? I'm a camera. Should I get this? The microphone. I used to, I didn't have the $800 yeah. uh, Sennheiser. I had the old school yeah. Rode, which was half the price. It looked like a brick like this. But what happens? You start growing. You need people because I didn't know. That's what I want you guys to do, man. Everything I'm telling you, I've done. And now I know that I can call him whatever. And he will, if he can't do it one day, he'll figure out a way because he remembers that. We were the first people that gave him the opportunity, and he knows that I'm a people person too. So whenever he needs me, he texts me. And yep. And he responds you. like this. Networking. Okay. So he's he he walks the way he talks. It's not it's not a show. It is for real. Okay. So. Got it. Coach. Hey. You're always, always welcome. Home, right? Can we get a picture? Can we get a picture real quick? Yeah, sure. Come on. Let's try to let's try to do it here. You mind? I'll take it. You'll take it? Yeah. I'm going to have to do the, the wide. Go super wide. No, no, no. It's actually pretty good. You got it? On the regular lens. Okay. Are you ready, guys? I'm just take a bunch, all right? Go for uh, it. Right, throw off the seat, throw off the seat. There you go. The right hand, right hand, right hand. All right, going with a bunch. There you go. When I post it, comment on it and I'll follow you guys, okay? That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. My man. Can you send me those Yeah, yeah. Guys, what are we going to do now? That was great, dude. Awesome, bro. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Call your parents. Are you on Instagram? You have to be on Instagram, right? I'm going to message you. Yeah, message me. Message me. Yeah, yeah. And anything you need, you let me know. Next time we get together.